Welcome back again, more Bloodborne stuff here today. We're still on the Chalice Dungeon. We're making our way through this selection of miniatures within this. There's a lot to do. But today we're going to focus on one of the most irritating enemies of a FromSoft game. It is, of course, a rabid dog. Much the same as all the others, with a jar for our clean water, a jar for our dirty water, some kitchen roll, and a wet pallet. And we're going to pop a wet pallet sheet over a nicely soaked sponge and iron out any creases or crinkles on the sheet so it's nice and flat to start paint mixing. And we're going to grab our really irritating dog, prime it with some black, ready for some zenithal highlighting. For the zenithal highlight, I'll grab a mat that I don't care about. I'll grab some thinner and I'll grab some cleaner. And we'll pop some thinner into the airbrush cup. Mix in some white ink. This is what I like to use for zenithal highlighting. You can use anything you like. You can also do the slap chop effect if you don't have an airbrush. There's a lot of great tutorials online about slap chopping. It's basically just doing what I'm doing, but with a dry brush technique rather than an airbrush. From a top-down angle, spraying some white ink over, making sure we've got a nice gradient from bright white to the dark black underneath. And from there, we are ready to start painting the little rabid dog. So I will begin by using some Skeleton Horde contrast paint and I'll be popping that over pretty much the entirety of the dog because it's pretty much coated in all fur. So this is a good light brown base to sort of start off with because then we can start adding in brighter tones and darker tones on top of it. So having this sort of like light brown rather than a darker brown to start off with makes things a lot easier going forward. Once we have successfully skeleton hoarded the dog, we can move on to a darker contrast tone being our snake bite leather, which we've used many, many times before in these collection videos. And I'm gonna paint the sort of underside of the fur, blending up into the skeleton hoard contrast paints. We're sort of getting that brighter bony kind of tone, nicely falling off into the darker mid brown tones. Once we've worked in the snake bite leather, we're going to move down even further through the darker brown contrast paints and we're going to be using some rattling grime contrast paint, which is a very, very dark, blacky, grimy brown kind of contrast paint. And I'll kind of be targeting the very lower areas, working from the sort of pores upwards, targeting the sort of underside of the belly as well, the underside of the chin, making sure we're sort of still retaining that snake bite leather to skeleton horde contrast blend, just making sure we're getting a nice darker shadow underneath. And then once we have those three tones of contrast paints in, we can move on to some Bugman's Glow, which is a really nice deep pinky fleshy kind of tone. And I'll use that to paint the little tongue that you can see hanging out of this horrible dog's mouth. With the tongue painted in, we're gonna add some different tones to the fur, starting off with some Storm Vermin fur and some Mournfang Brown. Mournfang Brown, I'm gonna start by painting on this sort of like little lip of flesh that you can see that's hanging off, that's exposing the rib cage underneath and also I'm going to use it to sort of target different fur areas like with the hunter dog and the rat and other ones I painted. Painting fur is not what I'm best at but this is what I find works for me using these sort of like similar complementary tones together adding in different variations to different strands of the fur starting off with one brown tone working it and blending it into the contrast paints that I have lower down and then I can start working in the Storm Vermin Fur, which is a much greyer version of brown. It's a fur colour, as the name suggests. So I can just start mixing that into different strands of hair, just adding a bit of dynamism and interest into the fur, so it's not just all one cohesive colour. And then you can mix in different blacks and whites into these tones, just to really sort of like mix it up and make it look really mangled and horrible. And with the bulk of the fur done, we can then turn our attention to highlighting it all with some Corax White. I'm basically just gonna kind of mix it into the colors that we had before and just really start accentuating just really the edges of the fur, making anything stand out and look a bit more interesting. Then for the little teeth and the rib cage, I can grab some more cast bone, paint that in, make sure I get all of those coated. There's sort of like little extremities as well poking out. It's also a good color to sort of add more variation to the fur if you wanted to as well, but I'm mainly focusing it on the teeth and the rib cage that you can see. And I'll grab some Abaddon Black to paint in the nose. Also, you can add a black wash to the fur as well to sort of like tie all these different tones together on the fur so it's not standing out too much and they can sort of like blend together a bit more. 
black washing is a really good idea for that. We can also use shaders and like Agrax Earthshade or Null Noil or things like that just to tie these tones together a bit more because they are a bit too stark in difference at the moment. But once you've got all that done, that's pretty much everything you need to do with the dog. You can add some coagulated blood in as well because it is a rabid dog. This is sort of the basic idea that I went with to start my first one off. That's another one down and done. If you did enjoy today's episode, please be sure to leave it a like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and drop me a comment if you so desire. And if you feel like you want to support the channel further in what I'm doing, you can head over to my Patreon. The link is in the description. The link is on the screen. You can join the gang that you're seeing on your screen at the moment who already support the channel. You can see behind the scenes content of all the bigger crafting dioramas that I'm putting together. Put your vote towards projects that you want to see come up on the channel and all good things like that. But from me, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time for even more Chalice Dungeon Bloodborne stuff. Peace out.